Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Alladhi bi ni'matihi Tatimu swalihat Thumma salatu wa salam Ala man jaana Bashiran wa nadhira Wa da'yan ila Allahi Bi idnihi wa sirajan munira Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh Wa safiyuhu min khalqihi wa khaliluh Arsalahu Allah ta'ala bil huda wa dini al-haq Liyudhirahu ala dini kullihi wa kafa billahi shahida يقول رب العزة والجلال ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحديث all praise be to Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. We are grateful to Allah for the numerous blessings that he always bestows upon us. It is usually a good practice for every Muslim from time and again to express his gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by always saying Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Brothers and sisters in Islam Yesterday a new month of Islamic calendar started the month of Rabi'ul Awwal and as you know, not all the days are the same before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not all the months are the same before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Tawbah, while trying to show the significance of some months, over others, he said, Inna iddata shuhuri inda Allah ifna ashara shahra. Allah wanted us to appreciate the fact that there are 12 months of the Islamic calendar. But four of them are special and distinguished months. Those are the Arba'atul Hurum the four sacred months. But it also doesn't mean that if the month is not among the sacred ones, then it has no significance. You know it very well that the month of Ramadan is not among Al-Ashhurul Hurum. Ramadan is not among the sacred months. But that one doesn't mean that it's not a special month. Because you know how many times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the significance of the month of Ramadan. The month of Rabi al Awwal, according to scholars, the Muslim historians, it is the month in which the liberator of humanity, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born. Today, especially when it comes the 12th day of Rabi'ul Awwal, even though some historians doubt whether this is the exact day when the Prophet wasallam was born, but others confirm that this is the date when he was born. The Muslim Ummah worldwide is divided 
along two lines. The first line is a line that calls for jubilation. The line that calls for celebration of this great event in the history of humanity. Those are the ulamas who say that there is no problem to celebrate the birth of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At the same time, there is a section of scholars, distinguished ones, who do not agree with the celebration. They say the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself did not celebrate, the companions did not celebrate, and therefore the ummah should not celebrate. Whether you want it or not, whether you belong to the first category or the second category, this is a continuous dispute that shall continue until the day when Allah shall close this world. But the Ummah took one strong point. Despite the two differences, the Ummah agreed that the birth of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it was a great event in the history of humanity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعْثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ Allah favored the believers. When he talks about believers, it doesn't mean that the non-believers are excluded. Allah says, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعْثَ فِيهِمْ Rasulam minhum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a very great favor for the mu'minun, the believers, when he sent to them a messenger, yatlu alayhim ayatihi wa yuzakihim. He recites to them the commandments from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he purifies them and he teaches them the guidance and the hikmah. The guidance being the Quran and the hikmah being the sayings, the actions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters in Islam, in our khutbah today, we do not want to go into the differences of scholars. I had always said that the Islamic society does not have that time to go into the exchange of uh, verbal abuses against those who celebrate and those who do not celebrate. The fact is, each of the two sections has strong proof to do what they are doing. So let us try to distance away from that and concentrate on some of the lessons that we can pick from this great event of the birth of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ikhwatul Afadil, brothers in Islam, Hunaka Kathiru min al Ibar wal Ibat. There are many lessons, there are many functions, there are many benefits that we can take from the fact that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born. Whether you celebrate or you don't celebrate, the fact that he was born. There are many lessons that we can pick. In the interest of time, allow me to concentrate on only one lesson, and that lesson is The Prophet was born as an orphan. Have you taken some time to pick some lessons out of that? It is on record that the Prophet was born when he was an orphan, he never saw the face of his father, Abdullah. Then, six years later, he also lost his mother, Amina. Therefore, he became a full orphan. What are some of the lessons that the Ummah should pick from the fact that the messenger of humanity, the liberator, the apex, was born as an orphan. These are some of the lessons, brothers and sisters in Islam. Lesson number one. 
إن الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم very the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم being born as an orphan he was taken care of by the close relatives starting with the mother up to the period of six years when Allah decided to take her life away after that he lands in the hands of the grandfather Abdul Muttalib then very few years he also passes on after some time he lands into the care of Abu Talib his uncle who moved on him who took care of him for some good time until messengership and after messengership at the time when the prophet wanted so much his support Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to take away his life and therefore he stood without any support from the family brothers and sisters in Islam when the prophet knew that he was an orphan he made some effort so that he can survive Farah al Ghanam, the prophet used to tender the gods of the people of Mecca until when he attained this at a, the age of discretion he participated in trade you know that lady khadija radiyallahu anha who was one of the prominent business women in Mecca, she had been searching for someone <clears throat> whom she can entrust her business with until when the information about the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam reached her and she called him, interviewed him, and she discovered that this is a honest, a sincere, and a truthful young man. Therefore, she surrendered her business to him. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even before prophethood, he started going with the caravans of Lady Khadija radiallahu anha. While there, the Prophet exhibited and demonstrated the highest levels of sincerity the highest levels of truthfulness the highest levels of honesty so much so that he came to be popularly known as as-sadiqul amin the truthful the most honest what as sisters in islam what lesson can we pick out of that lesson number one it is the responsibility of the society to take care of the less privileged. Orphanage comes with challenges, emotional challenges, physical challenges, psychological challenges. You cannot appreciate, you cannot know the challenges, the frustrations, the disappointments that someone can pass through when he loses a dad until when you are in that situation. First of all, the emotional care is lost. The financial care is lost. That is why it is one of the obligations and principles of Islam that the haves should take care of the haves not. That those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened for, please take care of the less privileged. One of the poets of Islam by names of Hafiz Ibrahim is an Egyptian. This is what he said. Ayyuhal Muthri, Ayyuhal Muthri, Ala takfulu man bata mahruman yatiman mu'asira. One of the poets of Islam, an Egyptian for that matter, known as Hafiz Ibrahim, he said, Ayyuhal Muthri, O you the affluent, O you whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened doors of sustenance, the doors of provisions. How do you see if you take on the responsibility, the care of a person who is less privileged, a person who is passing through hardships, a person who is passing through the challenges of orphanage? It is a call to the affluent. Then he says, Falma Yudrik, don't you know Annaka in Ra'aitahu that if you take good care of him, Ra'aita Badra Nayira, you might end up 
taking care of or giving responsibility for a shining crescent. Brothers and sisters in Islam, it is on record. Many people who have been successful in this world, the leaders, the politicians, the rich people, many of them have come from very humble backgrounds. So it is the responsibility of those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened for to take care of such people. I remember in my previous khutbah, I encouraged people to come towards the rescue of the orphans in the Muslim society. There are many of them. But when Hafiz Ibrahim calls on the affluent, it doesn't mean that others who have not attained or accumulated such big amounts of big values of money that we don't have that responsibility. Not at all. It is a collective responsibility of the society to take care of those who are less privileged. That is why Quran from a number of verses, it has been encouraging to take care of such people who are less privileged. Go to Surah to Dahar. When Allah was talking about the categories of people who are so dear and close to him, he said, وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجِهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا When Allah was mentioning special categories of people before him, he said, and those who extend provision in terms of food, in terms of shelter, in terms of accommodation, in terms of basic needs, to the less privileged, al-miskin, the needy, al-yatim, the orphan, al-asir, those ones who are the captives. But when they are doing that, they do it with the sincere intention, saying, innama nufi'imukum li wajihillah, we are extending this charity, we are extending this humanitarian aid to you, not because we want people to see us, not because of the showbiz, but we expect the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters in Islam, I wish to call upon all of us to take care of those who are lesser privileged. That is the first lesson. The second lesson, if you are coming from such a background which is humble like mine, فَلَا تَيْأَسْ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Don't console yourself. Don't console yourself. Don't start looking at yourself as a person who cannot advance. I have already told you, those ones who have been successful in the world, the majority of them have come from humble background. The background whereby you know our days of primary school, whereby our mothers could spare the leftovers, the old dresses, so that they can make shirts for us. They can make the bamfaloon, they can make for us the trousers, among others. Where we are going to school with bare feet. Where we are going to school and we didn't, we didn't have school fees. Those are the challenges that we passed through. But alhamdulillah, look at where we are now. The message is, even if your background is humble, don't lose hope. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always there. Brothers and sisters Islam, ala yakfikum anna yatim al-abawain kad asbaha nabiyya mursala kad asbaha rahmatan lil-alameen kad asbaha qudwatan hasana ila an qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi lakad kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatan hasana. Brothers and sisters in Islam, I know you might have passed through a lot during your childhood. I know that even now, you might be passing through a lot of challenges. Things are not working out. But Lord, lose hope. Isn't it enough for you that a person who was born full orphan and he passed through that hardship of tendering the gods of the people of Makkah, subhanallah, today is the one who is mentioned by the whole world, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is it that one enough to give you hope? Brothers and sisters in Islam, is it not enough for you to appreciate the fact 
that a person who was coming from such a humble background reached an extent of leading a state that has never been witnessed by history. Allah wa hiya dawlatul islamiyya, the Islamic state. Is it not enough to give you hope that a person who came from such a humble background, he raised the generation of strong men, the likes of Abu Bakr, the likes of Umar, the likes of Uthman and others. What is the message? It is the message of hope. Ya ayyuhannas, la tay asu min rahmatillah. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another example. Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam. Those of you who read Surah to Yusuf, you know the challenges of life that he passed through. To an extent that his own brothers plotted against him and they threw him in Ghayabatul Jub, in the ditch. Thinking that his life is going to come to an end at that particular spot. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes the story. He changes the situation until when he becomes the leader, the custodians of the stores of Egypt. Look at Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam. Having attained that status, the brothers come and they say that, take my khuduk, idhahabu wa bi qamisu in hadha, falquuhu ala wajihi abi ya'ati basira, wa atuni bi ahlikum ajma'in. Subhanallah. Yusuf, having passed through a lot of challenges, Allah raises him in status. He becomes the one in charge of the provisions of the whole of Egypt. After Allah raising his status, he says that, Go and call my father. Wa'atuni bi ahlikum ajma'in. Call my father on all my family members so that they can join me in this kind of celebration. Brothers and sisters in Islam, that is yet another lesson that we learn from the fact that the leader of humanity, the most perfect man, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was born as an orphan. The third, which also is actually the last. Adam al-Qalaq, inda al-ibtila, wa dawru al-ni'ma, awraddu al-ni'ma, inda tamkin. Alhamdulillah. Some of us have come from a very humble background. Here we are now, we can stand in front of you and you can listen to us. Some of you, you do not want even to remember where you passed through. But in Kampala, your name is mentioned, mashallah. What's your responsibility? Your responsibility is, first of all, first of all, be ready at any moment. You are about to be tested. Allah shall test you. Any levels that you reach to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is likely to test you. But when you are tested, remember where you came from. Don't panic. Don't stress yourself. Don't go into depression. Number two, remember to reciprocate to others who are now in the position you used to be in 10 years back. That is also your responsibility. It is at this moment, brothers and sisters in Islam, that I want the message of Surah al duha to echo into our ears. Surah al duha was revealed at the time when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had lost contact with the divine communication. Our scholars call it Fatratul Wahai. Time came when the Prophet lost the communication and the contact with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people of Mecca started mocking him, started saying that, look, your genes, your spiritual evils, or your evil spirits are no longer coming to you. The Prophet was so much stressed. He went into depression. When Allah looked at his situation, he revealed the surah to Allah. وَالْضُحَى وَالْلَيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا خَلَى Brothers and sisters in Islam, it is not far that Allah has raised you in status, in terms of wealth, then a big test comes to you. Don't panic. وَالْضُحَى وَالْلَيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى 
ma wadda'aka rabbuka wa ma qala your lord has never left you your lord has never had any issue with you that's a confirmation whenever you have a challenge in life try to look behind what have i done but i have is it that i have committed a certain sin and because of that allah is punishing me if you see your file clean ma wadda'aka rabbuka wa ma qala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has never left you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has never had issues with you it is just sunnatullah fil khalq that is the tradition of allah in this world that he tests people whom he loves and that's how he tested muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the message continues ma wadda'aka rabbuka wa ma qala walal akhiratu khayrun laka min al ula wala sawfa yu'tika rabbuka fatallah life cannot be narrated by the same story there must be ups and downs but when you see any challenge wala sawfa yu'tika rabbuka fatallah be contented be sure have the divine guarantee that allah will give you and verily he shall give you satisfactorily you should always have that kind of strong belief in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the prophet was in such a situation subhanallah allah wanted him to make a flashback that many of us rarely do if we are to make flashback we make it in a way of taking pride into ourselves you people you are not working you people you are not serious you people you are lazy me 10 years back i was doing this and that you are only referring to that to show some kind of authority prominence arrogance to people and that's not the objective of going back to your previous life allah says alam yajidka yatiman fa'awa muhammad remember before you complain remember the time when allah found you when you were an orphan he sheltered you he took care of you remember that before you complain remember that before you go into depression alam yajidka yatiman fa'awa each one of us should have that moment of reflection on your past where were you 10 years back where were you were you mentioned anywhere were you putting on the same way you are putting on were you known anywhere in the circles of this city alam yajidka yatiman fa'awa didn't your lord find you in such a very sore state so much so that you look like an orphan subhanallah fa fataha laka khaza'inu samawati wal ard he opened for you the provisions today you are enjoying alam yajidka yatiman fa'awa didn't he find you in such a vulnerable situation some people say that even the dog couldn't take you the dog even couldn't eat you but alhamdulillah today you are a human being you are recognized you reach a certain congregation and they say so and so has arrived but before who knew you brother and sister brothers and sisters alam yajidka yatiman fa'awa allah didn't you didn't he find you in such a sort of situation he extended the hand of help he extended support to you he gave you shelter he gave you care wa wajadaka dhallan fahada he found you wandering taking this road trying several options fahada he gave you the guidance wallahi look at your history of getting money how many jobs have you done how many jobs have you done some of the rich people can narrate to us and they say mwana wangi tewali muri muze gwesikolanga there is no any job that i have not done your allah found you wandering trying this trying that in an attempt to become rich fahadak he gave you the ilham he gave you the intuition that please don't go don't become a farmer don't do this take this route and alhamdulillah you are now successful wa wajadaka allah lam fahada he found you in the darkness 
He found you lost. He guided you to the right path. Alhamdulillah. You have been looking for a job several times. Today, mashallah, you are occupying such a good position in government. You remember those days when you were filling applications? When you were running up and down, expecting a message from this and that, having a lot of hope from this and that, cutting off communication from people because they have not helped you? He found you wandering, taking this route. You are just hopeless. You have no any route that is taking you. You are just on crossroad. He gave you the intuition, intuition that leave this, leave that, take this. Alhamdulillah, today was successful. He found you poor. And Alhamdulillah, he opened for you the provisions. If you have that in mind, this is the message. Now you are there, please never treat the orphans with harshness. Once upon a time, you were like them. If you find an orphan, don't treat them with harshness. Some will come to you begging. Some will come to you, they want you to hear them. Don't just dispel them. There is something that I would like this audience to pick out of this ayah. Allah said, The beggars, don't ridicule them. Don't undermine them. Don't despise them. He didn't say, Allah didn't say that the beggars don't be mean to them. He didn't say that. Why? Allah is the one in charge of the provisions. If you don't give him, Wallahi Azim, his rizq is there before Allah. So if you cannot give him, the least you can do, don't undermine him. At least give him a good word. You might come to me, you want some sign of assistance or support from me. But I don't have, I also have my family issues, my family expenses. You your obligation is not to despise, is not to dispel, is not to undermine. Allah didn't say that do not be mean to him. Because Allah is the one in charge of provisions. If you don't give him, there is an assurance that somebody else, be idnillah, shall give him. The Nigerians have a proverb which says that any human being whose mouth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened, he will never miss risk. Any person who was born with a mouth and that mouth has the capacity to take something in, wallahi, he has a guarantee that something shall reach his stomach. Yours is just, if you are to give him, please give him. If you are not to give him, please don't despise him. Finally, continue remembering that any status you have reached to, it has been the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين إن الحمد لله لك الحمد يا رب كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ولقنا بكرزا مبفونز ويشتالو مميز يكون قتولي مو Gwe mwezi wa mubaka Muhammadi sallallahu alayhi wa sallama muyazari bwa. Nkaya na weziri wakati waba atune wakati waba manyi. Obatu sani de okujaganya no kukungana uluwa mazari bwa gumbaka Muhammadi sallallahu alayhi wa sallama. Aba mukuba manyi. Bala banga techina buzibwedanga chirunji okubanga tusanyukira mazari bwa go. 
na yate ni wabaya abalala abala banga si chirunji kubela anga tukungana na yo obori na abo abakungana obori na abo abata jaganya echikulu chiri inti okuzari wakwa nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yari inkizo nene nyo edhi abantubo nukutuari za wamu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa yari yaka kasaya gamba nti wama arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alamin tetuwa kusindiko kuja kutuwa kusindika ngolichi ya kusasira ili ya bantubona mbufunze tusanyi mumwezi guno tugezeko nyoku lava ama zari kwa gana bituga funa muchi bia kuhitha chibia tuinzo kufuna obude buwebunte mieko na ye mfunye ye choku lavi lako chimucho ka umbaka sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ya zari buwanga mulekwa na ye tuchinuri de ngebi gambo vinji Elevi chieta agiso kumena anga tuchinyo nyola. Chite gesa choku ba. Ngo mutu ya zari bu anga talabia kuchitawe. Mama we ya wangala kona ye. Emiaka muka gajo ka. Na gena mikono ya jaja we. Na marili za angali mikono ya chitawo muto. Uluwale ele nsiyo nagwe yogerako. Yemubaka Muhammadi. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ebiyo kui gabi njina ye chisoka. Banna ibu funanyi ziwabwa fefe na. Okulabi liraba antu. Aba talibolo unji. Bamule kwa. Bakate yamba. Aba kade. Banna muandu. Puli mtu ye na inobu etavu. Bufuna njizibu wabwa foku muyamba. Omanyichi. Oinzo kubanga guwe yambi oluwa lero. Ya gendo kuta sencha. Ya gendo kuburule sencha. Ngan nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bwale choku sasira. Edi abantu wona. Songe yoku bili. Fena fena tuchimanyiti puli mtu. Aina javanga siwaru unji. Tuwa itamubintu vinji inga tukula. Na yeto guamu suubi. Buwabanga nabi sallallahu alihi wa sallam. Eya zari wanga murekwa. Na alunda. Embuzi. Na kone milimu jino na jino. Oluwale ilo ya yogiru wako. Chitege zanti nawe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sabolo kusitula. Echuo kusatu ngache chisemba yo. Oluwale ilo ngo utuse. Olibulu unji mubye mfuna. Olibulu unji oline chitibwa. Tewe labilo kudiza. Ababa fanana. Eyo jewa ita. Edabu ebu baka. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Biyabu mbaka Muhammadi. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Boya musa kwa suratu luha. Ya mugamba tetuwa kusanga. Ngoli mule kwa netukulera. Netukusanga. Ngoli mubeliri ya woli muafu. Netukugagawaza. Netukusanga. Ngoli tambule no neri. Netukulage kuboli yoyino kutambuli damu. Ebisela vinji. Ogeze zake vintu vinji. Kufuka successful. Tewari muli mugota kolanga ko. Ne Allah ya kuwabu wibu baka Na ganti kakati Genda mkutunda taka Uluwa lero li mgaga yogiru wako mkampala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala na gama Tineda genda mkutandi kawo masomero Uluwa lero kati olivuru unji Manyati Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Echo chakwa deche ngera Nolwe songeyo Faamma liyatima fala takhar Bosa nganga kufana na Tomu kangu kiranga Omuavu mumtu asaba Tomu vokore ranga Eche ngele Allah cha kuwade sawa yona Bela nguwa chinyumi yako Ala wa sallu wa sallimu Ala al-bashiri al-nadhir Fa inna hu jalla sha'anu hu amarakum bithalika haithu kal Inna Allah Wa malaikatahu salluna ala al-nabij Ya ayuha al-lazina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Wa sallu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Man salla alayya salatan wahida Sallallahu alayhi biya ashar Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad Wa ala ala Muhammad كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداك أعداء الدين اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى اللهم اشفنا واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار قوموا لصلاتكم